So from my perspective as an ethical hacker, system hacking is Lockheed Martin's old definition of the cybersecurity, um, cyber kill chain. The cyber kill chain is all about reconnaissance, infiltration, deploying, uh, finding a vulnerability, exploiting that vulnerability, deploying a payload, command and control, multiplication, so that you are always have a backdoor into that system. I think educating yourself and never stop being curious. Some cybersecurity professionals probably feel like after they get a couple certifications, they know it all, and that's backwards thinking. Because things are always changing, the landscape is always moving and shifting, and you need to stay ahead of the curve and therefore continue to keep reading and educating yourself. Staying up to date through blogs or podcasts or even you know Twitter from uh, the CISA office, all of those tools at your disposal will help you stay grounded into the newest threats, the newest vulnerabilities, and the newest threat landscape so that you can still be a professional in your career and succeed for your employer. Absolutely. I think Internet of Things is vulnerable, but more so infrastructure Internet of Things, aka IIoT. These are, you know, damn systems, power grids. You see that with the dark energy hack that happened in 2015 against Ukraine from Russia, and you see that um, the NotPetya attack that Russia <laughs> launched against Ukraine, and even um, some of these newer attacks that Russia is, of course, attacking Ukraine as they're in full on war with them. And it's because IIoT is infrastructure that isn't really designed with security in mind. So it already has a lot of flaws. And then you're putting it in the hands of people that don't really necessarily understand cybersecurity. So what are they going to do? They're probably going to result to no password or default passwords. Um, and it's just a recipe for trouble. So this is an area that I've specialized a lot in trying to learn about because I think IIoT really has the potential to cause massive mayhem. I mean, you're seeing it happen in Ukraine live, which is in a dark sense, um, really fascinating to read about. And I, 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 my heart goes out to the Ukrainian people, but you see all these things in theory and now you're actually seeing it in action. So it's, it's really scary seeing how devastating when you attack this critical infrastructure through just cybersecurity methods, you can really shut down an entire country. So that is a lesson of how this continues to be important and America and other Western countries need to keep watch of this so that they can protect their assets because there's a lot of those gaping holes in our security even back home in the US or whatever other country you might be from watching this video. I think Linux is probably still, um, specifically like Kali Linux is a great tool because there's just so much, so many tools that have been developed uh, in like the hacking sphere that you can play around with. You got steganography tools, you got, you know, password crackers, um, you got vulnerability scanners. It just seems to work better with Linux. Uh, the commands, the, the way I learned, it seems to be a better system suited for it deploying plate payloads. I'm gonna eventually start learning how to create malicious software for educational purposes, obviously, not so I can become some sort of evil hacker, but you need to think like a hacker in order to prevent the bad guys from actually doing their things. So Linux, by far, specifically Kali Linux, I think is the best platform if you wanna get started in, in hacking. Like learning Linux and learning how to utilize that command line is gonna serve you well in your career. I think I again would learn uh, I think I would recommend that you know people take a course on Linux. Um, the EC Council has a Code Red subscription, which I've actually signed up for, and you can get access to like dozens and dozens of videos to continue your learning after you get to CEH. And so I think it's a great value. Um, and they usually throw on some promotions here and there, so you know just wait for those who want to wait for a better deal. But you know I've enjoyed learning more about end mapping and. Um, reverse engineering certain things in Linux. So that is a, a great opportunity for you to learn. If you already have your CH and you want to keep on learning, um, I recommend Code Red. Otherwise, if you want free resources, you can find a lot of things on YouTube. And if you're looking for specific systems to start with, yeah, learn things about command line because almost everything you're gonna learn about hacking, it comes down to networking and pinging and all this kind of stuff that's gonna be in the more and more command line. As a certified ethical hacker, I would say that 
Fast is slow and slow is fast. What I mean by that is companies are in such a rush to put out the next product to stay competitive. Um, and so usually there's glaring issues in this iterative uh, product development life cycle. And you know what always usually is ended up on the cutting room floor? Security. And so they usually have to go back and patch things um, or kind of Mickey Mouse fix it. And you're just left with an unsatisfactory security product. I mean, it might be a great product and it might do what it needs to do when it meets the deadline, but there's some huge security flaws. There might be more zero day exploits um, available that developers weren't thinking of that is just ripe for the taking for bad actors. So if companies were to shift more of their mindset to thinking about how important security is and how you can incentivize that is think about money. You know, you all want to pitch this in the many meetings to these execs about money saved. Because if you just pitch it like it's gonna cost more money because we're gonna delay the project, you're not gonna get them on your side. If you're gonna tell them that if we don't do this the right way and we have to fix this and it causes a massive lawsuit to the company, well, I think you're gonna have their ear a little bit better and they might be more willing to slow down the timeline to make sure that you're implementing great security measures. So I think that is, that is a way that designing systems could be better. I think I might have an unpopular opinion. It doesn't impact it as much as some people might think. As long as you're educating your workforce, as long as you're implementing two-factor authentication, making sure that people's passwords are complex and or salted in a hash, making sure that you know, you're implementing hardware security measures, site security measures, all these things, it doesn't necessarily matter what system you're using, but if you have the right approach, you're going to be cutting about 90% of exploitable behavior from bad actors right off the top. And you know, if I've learned anything in my career of cybersecurity, it's that people are lazy. People are lazy to create complex passwords, but also hackers are lazy. Hackers just want that low hanging fruit. As they're realizing you actually might be a challenge, especially since a lot of them are script kiddies and just copying code off of GitHub, they don't really know how to create this stuff. Guess what, they're gonna move on to next target. So you're already just increasing your chances of not getting hacked and attacked if you're educating everyone to not click on malicious links and doing all you can in your organization. I think it goes back to what I just talked about. Educating your workforce is the most important thing. And it's not just educating the layman and uh, general staff at your company. It's educating the directors, it's educating the managers, it's educating the C-level executives. Everyone needs to be part of these meetings. Everyone needs to be understanding why security is important and if necessary, framing it as how much money this saves if we don't have to deal with a potential lawsuit or potential reputational loss, which can be sometimes worse than a lawsuit. So many companies invest a lot of money in their reputation and once that's destroyed in the public eye, you usually can't get that back. So companies need to shift how they think about cybersecurity by educating themselves more, implementing those methods more, and thinking about how can you shift from a mindset of risk tolerance to risk resistance. That's all I got. I'm Nicola Kaldadash, I'm a certified ethical hacker, and I thank you for your time.